I am Democritus. I have one theory of, of, of note and importance. I believe that everything in the world is essentially made up of little bits. And if you keep chopping things, uh, chopping a lot, that is, you will eventually get to these little bits and they are indivisible. You can't chop any further. And I will call these little bits at home. Now, in between these bits, there is merely empty space. And the world is made up of an infinite number of these little bits. Although Democritus' theory was correct, nobody took it seriously until thousands of years later. Oh, fiddlesticks, Pierre! Look at how the radio is behaving! Je te l'occhi, Marie! Let's call it radioactive! Oh la la! Sadly, Pierre was run over by a cart in 1906 and died. Ah! Oh my darling Pierre! He gone forever! The cure is provided Ernest Rutherford with the radioactive sources required to conduct experiments to further our knowledge of the structure of the atom. I propose that this is the structure of the atom. Similar to a plum pudding, the electrons are the plums suspended in a cloud of positive charge? The pudding. Mmm. This theory was, however, proved wrong by Ernest Rutherford in 1909. Boys, I want you to go away and scatter alpha particles on a thin gold sheet and see what happens. And get me all whiskey. Okay. okay! Cheers. Rutherford expected to see all the alpha particles bounce straight back and be deflected. What he saw was entirely different. Most of the alpha particles passed straight through, and a few were deflected at 90 degrees or more. This could only mean one thing. Atoms possess a discrete nucleus. In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed a more accurate structure of the atom, a small, positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons that travel in circular orbits around the nucleus. The uncertainty principle is such that states that the position of an atom and its momentum cannot both be known simultaneously. The more precise one knows the value of one, the less precise is the other. Mr. Heisenberg, God does not play dice with the universe. Mr. Einstein, will you stop telling God what to do? In 1931, James Chadwick discovered the neutron. It was the last of the proton, electron or neutron to be found, as it contains no charge. This meant the mechanisms of nuclear binding became primary problems. If I combine relativity and quantum theory, I can describe nuclear interactions by an exchange of new particles between protons and neutrons. There should be a generic term for protons and neutrons. Yeah, because they're both in the nucleus. Um, Nucleons? Yeah, inventive! But you really should know I'd be good for you I'd be surprisingly good for you In 1964, Murray Gelman and George Zweig tentatively put forward the idea of quarks. <coughs> quarks. Mesons and baryons, made up of two or three quarks or antiquarks, called up, down and strange. This was originally seen merely as an explanation, a mathematical explanation, for flavour patterns. But further developments have allowed us to look at the quark as an actual physical object, although of course it has not yet been isolated. In 1968, at the Stanford Linear Accelerator, electrons were scattered off protons. The electrons appeared to be bouncing off small hard cases. This provided evidence for quarks. In 1974, John Iliopoulos was the first person to present, in a single report, the standard model of the atom. So, I present the standard model. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bravo! Okay. Yeah. Leon Lee then discovered the bottom quark, which prompted the search.
it for the top quark! For the last 50 years, CERN and Fermilab have played a huge part in the world of particle physics. In 1995, after 18 years of searching, the top quark was discovered. In 1989, the Large Electron Positron Collider proved that there were only three generations of quarks. The Large Hadron Collider, soon to be in operation in 2008, is CERN's latest conquest. We hope to answer questions such as... What gives matter its mass? Why does nature prefer matter to antimatter? How did it evolve from the first instance of the universe's existence? We are now! And get me more whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I propose that this is the structure of our <laughs> Do you want me to wipe it off? Yes. No, it's fine. Just leave the sash on. <laughs> Fiddlesticks, Pierre! <laughs> People in school are like, we've got a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I love you, Connor. I got it! I've had enough of this. You're here every bloody week. It's the same thing. <laughs> Electrons. Nobody loves me. And nobody acknowledges my word. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be a bit more like normal? <laughs>